Hey, what's up, CISSP wannabes? Here I am once again, Colin Weaver, IT Dojo, Security Plus. No, this is not Security Plus. Shame on you, Colin. CISSP, questions of the day. Here comes question number one of two. Question one. All right, here's the situation. You need to establish connectivity, transparent connectivity, between two geographic sites in your organization. The users at each of the sites is going to need to be able to access servers, printers, and other IP-related resources at each of the individual sites. You want to minimize as much as is possible the amount of user interaction and intervention uh, that's required. Uh, both sites have internet connectivity. My question to you is, given these criteria, which of the following choices is the one that is going to be the best solution for what you want to do? Click on pause, give it some thought. When you got the right answer, click play and we can talk it all through. All right, first answer says, how about a SOX 5 proxy hosted at a cloud server? Um, no. Uh, no. Uh, one, SOX 5 stuff works best with TCP-based communications. Again, there are circumstances where you can make it work with UDP. Uh, two, it really is kind of a, more of a web browser thing. Again, that's not exclusive, but it is common. Um, or you have to have software that knows how to do SOX 5. Um, and the question goes in and says that users need to be able to access a whole host of different services and needing to go in and do a bunch of SOX configurations on different apps in order to make that happen is going to get complex and challenging. And I don't know why you're bouncing this stuff off a server on the internet anyway. So no, I just put this answer choice in here to kind of distract you from what the real answers are. So this is not the best solution for you to go in and do this. All right, how about encrypted remote desktop connections? Well, that would certainly give connectivity to the remote site. Uh, would provide for confidentiality. Somewhat transparent, but the user is involved. The user is gonna have to open up their, their remote desktop client and establish the connection and provide credentials. And so, um, what I'm wondering is, is can we get this user interaction reduced even further? So I'm not outright kicking this answer to the curb just yet, but I'm not really in love with it either. Um, technically, it would work, but um, not without more user involvement than I might otherwise have a choice for in the other answers. So let's look at those. Okay, we could configure a reverse proxy at each one of the locations to provide resources to users. Theoretically, this will work. Uh, it's going to require a lot of configuration on behalf of the administrators to go in and set this up. Um, and it's not necessarily guaranteed that everything is going to be offerable from the reverse proxy. So, but you could go in and reverse proxy these or effectively quote unquote publish them um, so that you could go in and access these resources. But again, I'm still, I'm still not in love with this idea. I feel like there's something better that's going to drive towards this notion of transparency and minimal user involvement and, and, the, and, and other stuff. So again, not in love with this answer choice, but let's keep looking to see if there's something better. Okay, individual TLS VPN connections on a per user basis. That sounds like a whole bunch of user involvement. Will it work? Quite possibly. Am I happy about it based upon the criteria defined in the question? Also, no. Again, it's something that we, I'm sure, could make work, but maybe not in the way that the question really wants. Which kind of puts me at the very last choice, which is to go in and configure an IPsec VPN tunnel between the two sites. Uh, what's beautiful about that is an answer choice, and what makes that the correct answer choice, because we're looking for the best answer choice, not necessarily the only right answer choice. This is the best one because it best meets the criteria of the question, which is to have connectivity to be able to access a whole host of IP related services and to minimize the amount of user involvement. If you have an IPsec tunnel between two sites, there is no user involvement. They simply open their program and access the resources. And of course, you have to make sure that all the appropriate DNS entries are there and that the tunnel is created and you have all the appropriate routes set up. But that's all administrator job stuff. The users just do their jobs. They just do the work and they can seamlessly access the resources that are on the other uh, side of, in, in this other geographic location and they have no idea that those resources are over there. 
They simply know that when they open their program, it just works. And so minimum user involvement, we've got security for it because it's passing through an IPsec tunnel, um, assuming we're encrypting the data going through that IPsec tunnel, and the users don't have anything to do with it. That makes that the best answer. So uh, that's, you know, again, this is one of those kinds of things that you may find in the CISSP exam is that um, it, it's not that only one answer is right. It's that many of the answers could actually be right, or you could be leaning towards talking yourself into saying, okay, well, this one is correct, so I'll go with this. But you need to go back to the question and those circumstances and say, what is the question really asking me? And in this particular scenario, the question is asking you what the best choice is for you to go in and, and choose from, not, not which one is, is, is the only one that'll work. And so keep that in mind as you take the exam when you're sitting there going, man, there's more than one right answer. If you find yourself in that position saying there's more than one right answer, my advice to you is go back and reread the question and make sure that you fully and completely understand what it is that they're asking you. All right, let's look at question number two then. Uh, what you've done is you've gone in and configured your system to generate an audit log event anytime an attempt to log in with a disabled user account uh, is done. My question to you is, is what is that an example of? Those are the answer choices to pick from. Choose the right one, click pause if you need to, then click play and we'll talk about it. All right, the right answer that you're looking for here is a clipping level. A clipping level is a term that we use to simply describe the threshold at which you audit. What has to happen in order for you to be like, okay, I'm writing that down. In this particular case, somebody trying to log in with an unauthorized, or excuse me, with a disabled user account achieves your threshold that is your clipping level and say, okay, I'm, I'm putting that in the books. So clipping level is the term, or the terminology that we use to go in and do that. All right, two more questions down. Hope they were helpful for you. If you like them, please click on that like button. If you want to get these questions all the time, please click on the subscribe button. I will appreciate that very much. And see you next time. Bye.